In this previous video, I mentioned that the sweet spot, the top of the bell curve before you start seeing diminishing returns, is a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos system. Okay. Seven bed layer channels, two subwoofers, and four height channels. But in order to maximize that setup to its fullest potential, it's going to cost a lot of money. But fear not, I'm gonna tell you about these five steps to slowly build your home theater piece by piece until you've reached the pinnacle 7.2.4 system. Let's get into it. Yo, my name is Elon Osborne and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. And if you like that too, please consider the many ways to help support this channel. Like this video, yeah. subscribe, yeah. become a patron, oh. rock some merch, get some tunes, read my children's book to your kids. Link in description. Link, link in description. Boy! I'm not really gonna tell you to buy this specific thing because honestly, that's up to you. Everyone has different preferences, different brand loyalties. This is more of a general guideline to help you on a steady trajectory to someday hit that 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos system. I may make some suggestions along the way, but that's not the primary focus of this video. This is aimed at those who already have an entry-level traditional system with an AV receiver and passive speakers that are wired. Whether that be a 5.1, 7.1, or 5.1.2 system, for example. So without further ado, step one. Once you have that baseline system, it's honestly time to think about acoustic treatment and room calibration. Room calibration on a basic level can be taken care of pretty simply because most AVRs come with some sort of room calibration software built in. But if you do want to take it a step further, get yourself a calibration microphone like the Umic One from Mini DSP. And when paired with REW, which is a free download, it will pinpoint the frequencies that will need some sort of adjustments on a speaker by speaker basis. And all AVRs do come equipped with some sort of parametric EQ in the software. So you can apply those adjustments accordingly depending on what you found out when you ran the tests with REW. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I definitely skipped the acoustic treatment step, which is such a silly oversight, but it is important. There are several websites that sell acoustic treatments, so I will leave a couple of them in the description below. Or if you are more of a handy person and like to do DIY projects, they are fairly simple to make if you want to do it that way too. So I'll leave a couple videos for that in the description below as well. But before you decide to get a bunch of acoustic panels that's going to cover every square inch of your home theater space, be sure to watch this particular video from Audioholics because it definitely changed my mind when it comes to acoustic treatment. The gist of it is that too many panels will deaden the sound too much, forcing your AVR or amps to work extra hard just to bring those levels to where you really want them. The big takeaway after watching that video is that it is actually more important to treat the floor and the ceiling rather than filling every square inch to the side of the listening position. Just watch the video. It's pretty eye-opening. Ah, <sighs> those acoustic panels and EQ adjustments sure made a difference. I like my home theater setup. But I want more. Step two. Get yourself a nine channel receiver with pre-outs and a few more speakers. Receivers such as the Denon AVR X3700H or 4700H, Marantz SR6015 and SR7015, Yamaha RX A3080 and the Sony STR-ZA5000ES are a few examples. Since you're rocking nine channels at this point, you can have a 5.2.4 setup or 7.2.2 setup. And since you're most likely going to be buying a couple more speakers, getting a couple in-ceiling speakers might be a good idea at this point. Upward firing Dolby Atmos speakers do a decent job, but come on, direct sound straight from the ceiling is going to be superior than reflections off of the ceiling. Inwall Tech is a good budget option for in-ceiling speakers, especially their HD series. Klipsch obviously has tons of in-ceiling options, ranging from budget to premium prices. Polk Audio and Definitive Technology as well. Whatever you happen to go with though, it is good to try and stick with the same brand as the rest of your speakers. It's called timbre matching since all speakers do have their own flavor of sound. Wow, these in-ceiling speakers sound great. I'm really glad I decided to install them. 
but I want more. Step three. It's time to upgrade the front soundstage, your left front, center, and right front speakers. At this point, if you don't already have some, you might want to go with some beefier tower speakers that flank either side of your TV. Upgrade your center speaker to something more powerful or bigger, because your front soundstage is what takes most of the brunt when you're watching a movie or a TV show. Something like the SVS Ultra series with their towers and center channels are a good option. Maybe a Klipsch RP504C center channel working with a couple of RP800F towers. Or if towers are just too bulky or too much of an eyesore, SVS and Klipsch also sell really nice bookshelf speakers that you might want to get. Or maybe you want to go for even a more high-end brand at this point, like the Kef LS50 Meta series or Focal Cora series. Whatever speakers you end up getting, just remember timbre matching and try to stick with a brand that not only has tower or bookshelf speakers but also in-ceiling options so you can have everything part of the same family. And with this step you're also going to want to power that beefier bigger front stage with an external amp. Which you can do because you got a 9 channel amp with pre-outs, right? Oh. There aren't a lot of 3 channel amps out there to be honest. Emotiva does offer the XPA3 but it is $1200. So instead, maybe you want to go for the 5-channel Outlaw Model 5000X, which is $769. Or maybe get a pair of Roost Sound A2100 2-channel amps for $600 total. So there are a few combos you could do in order to power your front soundstage. Wow, my front soundstage is so powerful now. But it's still not enough! Step 4 At this point, since all 9 channel receivers nowadays can handle processing of up to 11 channels, it's time to power all of your speakers with external amps. And if you've had a 5.2.4 or 7.2.2 system up to this point, you'll either want to get two more bookshelf speakers to flank the sides of your listening position, or two more in-ceiling speakers in order to achieve that 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos system. To power 11 channels, there are a number of options you could go for. 11 channel amps do exist to make your life a little easier, but convenience always comes at a cost, so they are pretty expensive. Amps such as the Emotiva XPA11 for $19.99, or the Monoprize Monolith 11 channel amp for $24.99, or the Yamaha MXA5200 for $28.99. Wow. Another approach you might want to take is to power all seven of your bed layer speakers with one amp, and then power your four in-ceiling speakers with another amp. If you decided to go for the 5 channel Outlaw amp that I mentioned previously, you could use that to power the height channels. And then get the Monolith 7 channel amp for $17.29 or the Emotiva XPA7 for $19.99 to power your bed layer speakers. Wow, these external amps make my home theater sound so spectacular! Give me more! Step 5 Your home theater space is acoustically treated and calibrated. You have a 7.2.4 setup. All your speakers are powered by external amps. Now it's time to get a dedicated processor, which now enters you in the world of separates. See, here's the thing about upgrading your home theater in general. It's not about making it louder and louder. Big deal. Anything can be turned up to obnoxious levels. What you're essentially upgrading is precise audio separation between each channel, as well as insane detail. After watching this video, I recommend watching this from Youth Man, who had a friend of his come over to listen to the difference between a traditional AVR and a dedicated processor. I'll leave a link in the description below because his buddy goes into detail about movies that he's seen before, but he just had a whole new experience when he listened to it through separates. In a nutshell, he described the AVR as being able to process sound in a general sense of immersion. Sounds were coming from a particular direction, giving the illusion of spatial enhancement, but with separates, there was no illusion. Audio was so precisely placed within the space that it was just mind-blowing. This is possible when a processor only has to process and not have to worry about powering speakers simultaneously. Since we have 11 channels, we want a processor that can handle at least 11 channels. And one of the most obvious signs that we're dealing with the big leagues is that there are no more RCA preouts. They have now been replaced by XLR preouts giving you much cleaner audio than RCA. So instead of using RCA cables to connect to your amps, 
it's now gonna be nice balanced XLR cables, including subwoofers. So you might wanna upgrade them at this point to accommodate having XLR inputs. For example, the SVS4000 and Ultra 16 subwoofers are the only ones that offer XLR inputs. And since this is the big leagues, processors can get crazy expensive. But brand new, the Emotiva XMC2 is by far the best bang for your buck at $3,000. Or you might be able to find a used Macintosh MX123 for less, or an Anthem AVM70. Although even Yamaha offers a dedicated processor for $26.99 with their CXA5200. So beyond this, the sky's the limit, my friends. Ever since I saw its ridiculous price, I've always wondered if the Klipsch THX Ultra 2 7.2 channel system is actually worth the $13,000 price tag just for your bed layer of speakers. Or maybe you want to go with the best of the best and get yourself a Trinoff processor, which start at $18,000. No matter what you get, there will always be some way to upgrade. My name is Elon Osborne. Osborne, giddy up. I may make some suggestions because RC, because XLR. The big takeaway that I got after watching that video is. <sighs> yep. Makes sense, right? So there you have it, folks. Thank you for joining me on my five step program on how to go bankrupt quickly. Or alternatively, how to get a divorce super duper fast. Which items do you have in your dream five-step upgrade plan? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another video like this one. And of course, always be listening.